my electrolysis tank revisited over a year later. From this part right here, y'all see that old rusty part right there? Oh, it's still good. From that to this, y'all see that part right there? Done been cleaned in that electrolysis tank. I did go ahead and put a little uh, rust oleum primer on that part you can't see. But as you can see, that part right there, that's as clean as can be with no loss of the metal. This part was cleaned, it was uh, water brushed, and uh, washed in the thinner bath, and then it was uh, used some of that metal prep on it yonder to protect it. Now this is the way we did that. The electrolysis tank itself, if you remember, the go back to the video uh, it's more than a year ago and these plates right here I described on that video uh, how I, how these came into my possession but they are a graphite plate it, it does have a carbon content but I think the carbon content is very low I, I don't know what percentage it is but we, if you're searching for a plate to use on these that does not contaminate your tank you're searching for a graphite plate. And this right here are these are used plates, but they're still good. And as you can see, this one, this was down in the tank in this position, and you can see how it's eroded. This was the original. That's that's the way that that's the way that that started out in life, and you can see how much it has eroded away. And this, this tank that I've got here, it's five gallons. It serves me well. The, and it's, uh, I do use this year out there super washing soda. And, and the, the chemical there is sodium carbonate. If you use something else, then you will produce a different kind of gas on, on your tank will produce a different kind of gas with a different type of electrode and a different type of contaminant. That's all this sodium carbonate is. It just contaminates the water so that the current will flow. Current flows in a line of sight. You do not have to have an uh, opposing current, uh, opposing plate. You only need one plate plus the part. The current flows between the two parts. That's the reason that you use so many plates in order to get a hundred percent coverage around the part. But you do not have to have two plates. Only one is required. These are still good for a uh, short short uh, tank and I'll show you how I clean flywheels and use these short ones. And let's move on to the tank now. Okay, move up front a little bit. It's important. It's just a your regular old common battery charger, Yonder. Just your generic. Get them anywhere you want to. This one right here happens to be on about, uh, I think that's about six amps. It's on Yonder now. And this thing right here has been plugged in for more than a year. If you go back and look at the first uh, uh, electrolysis tank video that I put up Yonder, that's when this was plugged in. And it's been in there ever since. The uh, and I do just you know like clean parts uh, every day. And if I go away on a road trip for more than a week or so, I just leave this thing plugged in. Uh, and not that it takes that long. It's just at the point that the way this works, it will only remove the rust. It does not does not bother the metal. And you probably should do your homework now because there is some electrodes that you use and some contaminants that you use in the water that that will actually produce uh, hydrogen embrittlement <laughs> do your homework on hydrogen embrittlement of metal and that's uh, that comes about when you just use leave a part in there too long plus some other factors involved in it it's quite important on structural parts hydrogen embrittlement do the homework now let's get on to that tank. As you can see, the uh, bubbling action there, 
and I'm not sure you can see a little vapor a little outgassing it may just be heat vapor I'm not sure on that but uh, the, the tank is it's quite active this this does produce heat in the tank the warmer the tank even to the point of heating the water when you set up a new tank or oh, it's it, it really uh, improves the action to have a heated tank we're going to look at this one up close now The flywheel tank that I have set up, it's a 55 gallon plastic drum. It's cut off yonder about six inches tall and uh, I can clean a flywheel in here about 22 inches. And, and you see those used up, half used away elements, electrodes, uh, call them what you want to. But I just uh, place them all the way around the tank and then just daisy chain connecting them together one to the other one to make a circle around there. Occasionally I will use these up to where I have but only one or two and then as I walk by I'll just turn the flywheel occasionally about an eighth of a turn you know walk by tomorrow put, after a while you know just keep turning it a little bit and it does it will clean the whole flywheel. The positive goes to the uh, electrode and the negative goes to the part to be cleaned. Just make the connection and uh, set back and let it do its work. As you can see the action on the on the top of the liquid there is uh, it just proves that it's a working. And like I say this tank has been plugged in for about a year about over an, over one year. The uh, I did put a uh, I put a, I put a one of them watt meters on each under. The uh, current draw is minimal. It don't hardly costs anything to to do this system with. When you disconnect one of these connections, you should, by all means, no ifs ands buts about it, unplug the uh, electric cord right yonder. Unplug it. Pull it apart. Put that down here and put that over yonder. Now you can unconnect this right here without having a spark right here. If you had a stainless steel electrode in here or some other metal or a different kind of contaminant in the water, then you produce a different kind of gas on the tank. That's the reason that you do your homework because you can make a very hazardous gas hydrogen. With all of that said, this I, I, I just loaded this up yesterday, and uh, I do clean parts about every morning. Come out, these right here are ready to wire brush. The uh, and what you do is you come out, you get three or four of these hanger parts. They be multiple parts, like this right here. You get this many parts, take them to the war brush, war brush them, drop them into the lacquer thinner tank, and then come back and get some more. But while you're away, you would plug the you would plug the tank back in because if you let these set on the workbench, if you take the whole thing in there, let me explain this. If you take this whole amount on the workbench and start war brushing them, by the time you get to the last part right there, it'll either be re-rusted or the contaminant will be stuck back on it and it'll cause you pain and hardship to get it off. If you do it this way, just take off a few parts, go clean them, come back, get a few, then it's uh, quite pleasurable to clean these parts. The beauty of this is, uh, uh, you know, I'll take a road trip occasionally. When I do I just leave the thing operating and uh, it will clean the part up to the point where that it has removed the rust. I do have a, a plate here and a plate opposite over there with a connecting. This here connects the two plates together. You could have four in there. Just, you know, the way I clean like this right here seems like two works for me really good. 
the uh, occasionally if I have something that's perfectly round to clean I will add another two plates and clean all four sides uh, to clean a cylinder sleeve you just put it right down in the middle and then at that point I do put a graphite bar down the center of the cylinder at that point the positive would connect to that and the negative would connect to the cylinder itself and it cleans outward a line of sight keep that in mind not that it needs to be replaced emptied or cleaned out it's just purely for a show and tell only that we're going to change this just absolutely no reason to change it for no reason other than a show and tell this is just a connector for ever how many plates that you want around your tank and you see how much is eaten away and what I'll do is when I put it back in there I will put it upside down and what we have here is uh, if you remember we used washing we used washing soda uh, the, um, the, the, the what we have left here we have picked up some iron in this in this liquid but it's nothing more than what you would have going down the washing machine so basically it's drain friendly as some of the other concoctions that that uh, uh, that is available uh, not the case here I'm going to dump this and then we'll build a new one a view into the bottom of the uh, container it's a five gallon bucket plastic but you can see how much residue that's all the residue was left in there after one year okay We'll take a cloth and remove that and uh, put it to the trash. And then we're going to get on with the show. After the other bucket went down the drain, all I've done here is uh, reposition the uh, plates, put the jumper wire from one to the other, and this is nothing but faucet water. Now, it's, uh, it's pretty much five gallons, and I'm using this super washing soda and you see about how much I'm putting in yonder you know what I mean uh, you can you can get you a cup and you can measure it if you want to but I say just pour you about a half a box in there you know get her done the the only reason you put anything in this water is to act as a conductor electrical conductor and you do need to stir this if you just pour this washing soda off over in there it will uh, form a clinker down on the bottom and uh, so you do need to to stir it and there's just I didn't you know you, you, you noticed there that I didn't clean the bucket out really good because it's just not necessary this actually works on contamination so you know that's good enough right there just stir around get her mixed up pretty good like I say I do have to add about one gallon of water about every day uh, especially in the summertime because this is out here in the sunlight and um, evaporates so and you can see there with this yard stick here that's about uh, this bucket right here is about that tall which is about uh, well I can put some in here a foot long and it'd be completely immersed and then it's about uh, say a foot so I can put an object in there about that big and if I need something bigger then I just go to the 55 gallon barrel plastic and this is a plastic container graphite electrodes y'all see them wires right there you know they about 12 14 inches long 
I've been using these wires for over a year, and 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 it's baling wire. Actually, uh, in lieu of baling wire, this is actually mechanics wire. You get it up there at the parts store. Different uh, different gauges. Yeah, I, whatever this is right here, it works really good. But there's actually no tear deterioration on the wire. If you're using copper wire in here and you're getting a whole bunch of scum, that's probably the reason why. Uh, and, and, and they're just, like I say, these, I just reuse them, reuse them to the point where I just hang the parts lightly, like this right here, uh, uh, this amount. And I will put about twice this many parts in there at any given time. Just hang them in there like that right there. Make sure no parts are not touching an electrode. Uh, hook the um, negative to the part to be cleaned. The positive to that over yonder. Now's the time to plug her in. I did see a little spark right there, so that's not making contact. Okay, we got a reading on the, uh, we got a reading on that battery charger there. Y'all see that? About, uh, about four, that's about six amps. Yeah, we'll let that go. You know, it's like having a hard hand. <laughs> I just leave you with that for the comments. Now we're getting her done here on the East Coast, Arkansas. Shop Dog Sam.